Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand as we begin to give God some praise for Him allowing us to be here again today just to worship Him, just to give us another day, Lord, to get it right. Just another change, Lord. We thank you. We want to let your glory rise upon this place.
and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, you can help me sing. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you, Lord. I will praise you in the morning, praise you when the sun goes down my heart. That's why my heart is filled. I will never let a day go by without praising you, Lord. Oh, that's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, 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 oh. that's why, that's why my heart Died for me way back on Calvary. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. But I thank you for giving me the activities of my limbs. Oh, that's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Oh, 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 oh that's why, that's why my heart. Is filled with praise. Come on, if your heart is filled with praise, just give him a praise right there. Come on, just love on him and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Let us magnify the Lord in our lives. Amen. Let us magnify who God is in our lives. See, when you magnify something, you see a, uh, it, it, it becomes bigger in your life. It becomes bigger than what you have experienced before. When you magnify something, it, it kind of comes bigger than anything else. That is surrounding it. Have you ever used a magnifying glass? <clears throat> it allows the item that you're looking at to become bigger and bigger. That's how God is. If you can magnify God in our lives, everything else that's around us becomes smaller. If we magnify Him, 
See, when you magnify something, you put a focus on it. You put the magnifying glass over exactly what you want to look at, and it becomes bigger. It's almost as if everything else doesn't matter. Think about it. Magnify God. Amen. Just a few announcements before we get into the sermon. As you know, every Sunday at 718, we call in to pray together for about five or so minutes. So if you have some time, if you want to touch and agree with us, if you just want to allow us to pray for you, pray with you, you can submit your request at soulprayerteam at soulchurch.net, or you can also just call in, as I said. That's every Sunday at 718 for about five or so minutes. Amen? At the end of the service, we'll have a, uh, Belinda will have a little bit more of an announcement related to a, a Christmas uh, party, and so look forward to that after the sermon. Amen? All right, you guys ready for Brother Ken? He's going to be bringing the message today, amen? that you have provided for us. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. And I ask right now that you would speak through me. Give me the confidence and the courage to uh, say what you have to say to your people. I don't take this lightly, Lord. So just speak. I pray that at the end of the sermon, uh, <clears throat> your people are motivated, edified, and that you would receive all the glory. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, Yeshua the Christ. Amen. <clears throat> I hope everyone enjoyed their uh, Thanksgiving and that they you know, spent time with their friends, families, and loved ones. Hope you ate enough. Uh, maybe you didn't eat enough. <clears throat> Still have some leftovers in the uh, refrigerator. And then for those whose teams won or lost this weekend, God bless you. Um, remember, for those that are watching us online, uh, and for those even here in the audience, we have multiple social media platforms that we're posting things to on a normal. And so if you get the opportunity, share, you know, like, hit, uh, subscribe, all those kind of things. It's important, I think it really is important for us to usher in the purpose and the will of God through social media. We do it for everything else, so why not for God? And so again, if you get the opportunity on your phones, Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on chat, Snapchat, we're on uh, uh, YouTube, and we're even on TikTok. And so if you have a TikTok in, you have an opportunity to look up Soul Church. That's actually where I'm going to start today. Um, Facebook and Google, Amazon, uh, the likes of most of the social media companies, they know everything about us. Some people would tell you that they listen. Lexa's listening to us, Siri's listening to us. Hey, Google, right? Even your refrigerator's listening to you if you got a smart television. But I would argue that they're not listening to us. I would argue that we offer everything that we know of our lives to those platforms. We tell them where we're going to go. We keep our location on. We're driving all across the city. We tell people exactly uh, uh, wh what we're looking at, and they can go into our cookies and check those kind of things out. They know everything there is to know about us, not because they're listening to us, but because we offer it. We tell them what, what shoes we like and what clothes we don't, don't like. They have it down to an algorithm that if you stop on a page for just three seconds, that's recorded. They know how fast you scroll. They know even the impression of how you type. 
If you take it a little bit further, some of the media companies put it all together. They make more money off your data than they do off just your cell phone plan. A company like AT&T knows what you watch, how long you watch it, what you record, what you keep on your DVR, and what's important to you. They combine that with what you scroll on your internet, your home internet, what you saved, what you went to. Then they combine that with your location services of where you went. Is it just me? You ever went to Facebook and all of a sudden there's them shoes that you've been thinking about? <laughs> Or you get ready to type into Google, and before you even get your whole sentence out, there's the first, like, what's this sorcery that they have that they know exactly what I'm doing, what I'm thinking? It's called predictive analytics. And again, I argue that they're not listening. We fill out polls and things online that tell people, this was my favorite color, and this is what I would do, and here's what I'd go on vacation. And next thing you know, you got a vacation to the Bahamas saying, hey, come to the Bahamas. How did they figure that out? They know a lot about us. But today I'm going to tell you that God knows even more. God knows more than Google and Amazon and all of them combined. I would tell you that our God, who created everything, knows everything there is to know about you. Everything. You, you name it. Not only does he know about you, he knows the intent. He knows why you did it. He, he knows all the way down to your who, what, when, and where. He created you. He created all of us. So he knows more. So it takes us to our scripture today. Our first scripture we're going to look at here, and I, I'm going to take us on a, a bit of a journey, but bear with me. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. Next scripture. Scripture reads, As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father, serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts. He understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him but if you forsake him, you will be rejected. And last sentence, uh, last uh, scripture is found in Psalms 37, three through seven. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. See, we serve a God who knows everything about everything. And watch this. He did it all in six days. God hadn't created anything new since the day of creation. He hadn't observed anything or come across anything he had he hadn't sat back and said hmm that's new to me I've, I've never discovered that you know God has never discovered anything everything that he's ever done everything that he's ever created everything that you'll ever need he did it in six days because he rested he created everything there was to create and then he rested he said I'm done I'm your problems your trials, your situations, every issue you'll ever face, it was solved at the day of creation. That's hard for us to fathom because we look at a problem, we look at a situation and think there is no solution. And why did I get into this, this, this place? And how did this happen to me? And why is this happening to me? And God is sitting back like, oh, I already figured all that out like millennials ago. You just have to. Trust me. So here's how important and how amazing and how big God is. And, and, and just stay with me on this. The Bible says in Luke 12 and 7 that he knows even the number of hairs on your head. He, he knows how many pieces of hair I have on my head. I can start plucking them out. He knows. Stay with me. This is God talking to you. Ken, you have 93,223 hairs on your head. 
you got about 5,000 hairs in your, in your chin. Ken, there are 33 trillion blood cells going through your body right now. Ken, you, you slept 223 hours this year. You probably should have slept more, but you worried 40,000 times this year. You, you blinked 43 million times, and your heart beat 100,000 times. Today, it's going to beat 35 million times this year. Ken, you cried 34 times this year. You worried 57 times this year. Ken, you couldn't sleep 120 times this year. Ken, I saw that you were overwhelmed 23 times this year. You were joyous 90 times. You laughed 10 times this year, Ken. Ken, you were critical of others 86 times this year. You were thankful, truly thankful, twice this year. Ken, you helped your neighbor five times this year. Ken, you, you called that loved one that I told you to call once this year. Ken, you held a grudge 56 times this year. Ken, you, you watched the news 600 times this year. That was the 5 o'clock news and then the 10 o'clock news. Ken, you were on social media for 350 hours this year. And you're on Netflix for about 500 hours. That's three movies once a day for a full year. Ken, you withheld information from your spouse five times this year. I'm sorry. Ken, you lied to your parents 25 times this year. You only smiled three times this year, like truly smile. You encouraged 40 people this year. You prayed 250 times this year. And King, you shared our relationship with other people zero times this year. There's probably more I could go down the list of things that God truly knows, but he knows knows, like, he, he knows everything. Do this thought experiment with me. And, and, and when I was a kid, I used to do this, trying to figure out how amazing God was and how big God was. But just, just to fathom again how big God is, I want you to think of a number. Just right where you're at right now, think of a number. Now think of a color. Now think of your favorite sports team. Now think of a different number. I don't care how much I think I know Brent, or how much I think I know little Ken, the probability of me picking out the number, the color, sports team, and then another number is highly unlikely. That's why lotteries make so much money, because the probability goes down when you start throwing more into it. Do you know that God, in that instant, right now, could tell us every number that you just thought ahead of time? Day of creation. He knew he even knew Ken was going to ask this question 2000 something years ago. And he knew the color that you was going to pick and the number and the sports team and the number. And he knows even more than that. He knows everything there is to know. I'm trying to lay a foundation to where I'm getting ready to go. He knows it all. So why wouldn't we as believers spend time and dedicate our lives and follow the ways of the person who knows everything, everything. Everything we ever would need to know, he knows because he chose us, he created us. He put those purpose and those ways and those characteristics about who you are and why you are in you. And he did not make a mistake. He created everything. He put it in his plan, he put it in his budget. He saw this thing out in millennia. He had an infinity plan. Some of us have a one year budget or a six year, six month budget, and we kind of know where the finances and the family will be a year from now. He saw where everything would be thousands of years from now. That's the kind of God we serve. He's amazing and he didn't make mistakes. You know, you're not here by accident. It wasn't just happenstance that your parents came together and had you. Do you know that again, from the day of creation, God thought about you before you were even born. The Bible says he thought about you before you were conceived. For all those who are either pro-choice or, you know, no, whatever the options are out there. The Bible tells me 
that I was thought of before I was conceived. I was a person with a will and a passion and a, and a goal before my parents even came together. I, I want to share something with you. Go to the next slide. See where it says self? That's you. If you go back one generation, you'd have four sets of grandparents, right? Your mama had a mom and dad, and your dad had a mom and dad. For those people who said, well, mama, grandma had 13 kids, and we just happened to be here. We got a big old family. Or mom and daddy only had two kids. You know, it is what it is. God knew from day one that you would be here. Because it took not a string of accidents and people just happened to get together. God designed this. Think about this for a second. For you to be here, if you go back to great grandparents, great great grandparents, that's 16 people plus your mom and dad who had to come together for you to be here today. If just one person decided, yeah, I'm not moving to Oklahoma or we're going to abort the baby. You wouldn't be here today. G go back five generations. Great, 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 great grandparents. That's 128 people who had to stay in the path of God for you to be here today. I, I thank God. Think about this. I know this is eerie to think about. But that slave great great grandfather of mine who had an opportunity to run or fight back, I thank God he didn't. I wouldn't be here. For that indigenous settler, my, my Indian heritage, who had to walk that trail with tears in their eyes and move to Oklahoma, I'm glad they didn't fight back. I'm glad he didn't say, you know what? We're not leaving Florida. We're not leaving Georgia. And if he had fought, Many millennia ago, thousands of years, ago, hundreds of years ago, we wouldn't be here today. For the 34 percent of me that is European, according to 23 and me, and I'll talk about that more here in a second. For my European heritage who decided, let's go to the new world. Let's leave Europe and, and go see what America has. I would not be here today. We are not accidents. God in creation on day one, in the six days that he created everything, saw you. He saw you. And it wasn't an accident. He had a purpose. He had a plan. He, he knew that for you to serve the purpose and the design of what he called you to be and what he called you to do, those people had to be here. And if you do the math here, let's assume that there's 23 years in between each one of these that your parents had you at 23. Let's say it was 30, then it would even be more years. That's 10. 10 times 30, 3,000 years ago, someone struggled and said to themselves, why? How? What's going on? And we are the outcome. We are the fruits. We are the prayers of something that happened many, many many years ago. He's the CEO of the universe, the original programmer. He's the lead designer. He's the executive producer, the writer, and the director over our lives, our parents' lives, our great-grandparents' lives. Now, shouldn't we have more faith in the God who had all of this completed and designed Versus our friends, our family, Google. We'll ask Google in a second. Google, uh, tell me what the. Yet we won't go to God and say, God, tell me what I'm supposed to do with my, my life. He's listening. He's watching more than Google ever would. Question that I have for you today. Do you know God? He knows you. He knows everything about you because he created you. But do you know God? Do you know how he thinks? Do you know what he wants? Do you know what he doesn't like? How much do you know the Lord? Because he knows us. And the relationship that we have with God goes two ways. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. 
You guys got recently married. How long did you guys date before? I'm all putting them all on the spot. Didn't know I was going to do this. How long y'all dated before y'all got together? Y'all known each other for a while. They knew each other before they made that decision. They communicated. They took the time, priority, pr prioritized one another. And next thing you know, they decided this is what happened. A lot of communication. A lot of reasons marriages fails because they don't what? Communicate. So if you claim you know God, you claim you have a relationship with God, the question I have for you is how much do you talk to him then? You can't have no relationship with somebody you don't talk to. That's not a relationship. Slide, uh, go to, I think, the, the fourth, go back to the third slide. Go back one. God said, I give you the desires of your heart. I give you what you want. But there's a caveat to getting what you want, because it's really not what you want. It's really what he wants. But wait, 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 preacher. Wait, wait, Ken. That's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say I can ask him for anything. Didn't it say that? You just ask, seek and knock and the doors are just open up. No, that's not what it actually says. The context of those scriptures and the entire Bible actually says this. Let's, let's read this slowly. You got to know him, know, know the God of your father before you do anything else. You got to know this man. The only way you get to know him is if you spend time with him, communicate. Oh, and then then you got to you got to serve him. What what can I babe, Can I get you anything? Anything I can do for you? Do you want me? I'm running to the. Are you serving God? God, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you need me to say at work today? Anybody you want me to touch any lives with your whole heart? With your heart, not because you have to come to church, but because you really want to be here in a willing mind. Like I'm willing, I'm willingly picking up some flowers for my wife, not because she likes flowers. She I'm willingly doing it. Because he searches my heart. He knows me. He knows me. He knows if I'm really real or if I'm fake and understands your intent. And seeks out everything. It's in doing that. That the desires that he's placed down on the inside of you. Uh, will be birthed. Um, everyone knows Pac-Man. Everyone played Pac-Man. Uh, game came out in 1980 by a company called Namco. Me and my kids were actually playing it this past uh, Thanksgiving break. Pac-Man has one purpose. He was designed to eat little small pellets, little dots, and occasionally he'll eat four power pellets, right? And it gives him strength and power to go out and do other things. And then occasionally throughout each level, certain fruit pops up. Cherries, strawberries, melons, oranges, a galaxia from one of the other games, Easter egg is in there. Uh, I think it's a key. And then maybe even a, 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 a bell. I think that's what's in there. That's how the game was designed. How idiotic would it be for Pac-Man to be running around in that game, wishing for and praying for and hoping for, man, I wish there's some chicken and some grapes on this next level. <laughs> Man, I re Lord, please, please, please let there be some chicken and some grapes on this next level, Lord. Pac-Man wasn't designed that way. It was designed cherries, strawberries, apples, and oranges. We'll find ourselves praying and asking God for things that he did not design for us. Lord, I want that promotion so bad. What if back in millennia, it was never his purpose for you to have that promotion? Or maybe it was. But it was for another time, another place, another season. Lord, Lord I, I really think we should move to Dallas. That's my heart's desire. You know what we'll do sometimes? We will kick in the door and walk through it and say, this is the Lord's will for my life. <laughs> I made it to Dallas. Man, we're living in Dallas now. You end up with so much heartache and problems and can't keep a job and the house won't go right. And 
God never told you to move to Dallas. But you were so insistent in having your way that you missed the will of God. It, it would be equivalent to explorers. Uh, you know, me, me, Brent and Ken, we start a business and we say, you know what? We're going to mine for gold and diamonds and uranium in Spencer, Oklahoma. We buy hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of equipment and we start digging for gold, uranium and diamonds in Oklahoma. Oh, we really hoping and praying and wishing, though, because deep. I mean, we really want it like we really want to find gold, diamond and uranium in Oklahoma. But once we start digging into this Oklahoma land. We're going to find petroleum, natural gas, crude oil, sand, salt, gravel, clay. That's what we're going to find here. Now, we'll have a choice to make once we find those things. Mm, stay with me. God is talking to somebody. We can take what God has put inside of the earth and use it. And probably do pretty good. We could start a brick company or sell the, the, the gravel and the sand to brick companies and they can make bricks all across the world. We could do something with the oil or we can get frustrated. Close down the business and say, man, ain't no uranium in this ground. God must not love me. God must not hear me. He, he, he must not see the desires of my heart. And God is saying, I do love you. But it's not gold. It's not diamonds. I got something else for you. And the question God has for us today, are you open to his will? Are you open to his way? Do you even know what God wants for you? Are you listening? Or have we already made our mind up that by the time I turn 30, this is where I expect to be? And when I'm 40, I expect to have 10 rent homes and this business and this much money in the bank. And when I turn 50, I should have this much already set aside and ready. And God said, whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's absolutely OK to ask God for things. But it's just as important to sit back and say, OK, but what you want to do? You ever go out to eat with your, your loved one, your wife? Or somebody, you say, what you want to eat? Now, deep down inside, you already know you, you want some chicken. <laughs> you already made your mind up that you, you know, want some barbecue or something. Or some, I love Mexican. Mexican will always be on the agenda. It, I don't care. You can ask me 10 years from now, I'm going to tell you, let's have some Mexican food, right? But out of curiosity and out of love for those that are in the car, what y'all want to eat? Now, if I'm truly listening... I might consider something else. But if they don't speak up, we have Mexican. OK. God is listening. God knows you want that job. You want to get out of that situation. You want a new situation. He, know, he knows what you want. But have you taken the time to pause and say, but, but what you, where do you want to go, though? What do you want to eat? What do you want to do, Lord? I'm actually getting ready to close because it's a simple message. And I'm going to walk us through three steps to actually knowing the purpose of the Lord. I'll give you a couple examples, though, before I get there. If you think about the children of Israel. They were in that situation with Egypt for how many years? 400 plus. You think they prayed and asked God to help them get out of that? You think God was sitting back, uh, I'm sorry, God's sitting back, not knowing what was going on, and he just had his back turned and all that stuff was happening and God had no idea? Or do you think God actually saw what his people was going through? I believe he saw it. It just wasn't their season to come out of it yet. Perhaps sometimes in those seasons of it just being tough, it being rough, it being hard, it being challenging. And God is actually doing something inside of you. Is it, is it possible that in those seasons where we feel like he ain't listening, 
He ain't heard my cry. I'm just sitting here struggling. That he's actually building in you something that you wouldn't have been able to build in other situations like character and resilience and perseverance and power and courage and confidence and faithfulness. See, when things are good, those kind of things can be crafted. Oh, but when you hit a, 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 a rough road and you just hate your situation that you're in, you learn some stuff. See, we say, Lord, give me the new job. Give me the promotion. Have less responsibility. I can delegate, make a little bit more money. And God give you a lateral job. Same amount of money and more work. And you're like this. This ain't what I asked for, Lord. But God is saying, before you can become a director, you got to learn love for people and patience and kindness and hard work. And like we, we ask God for things that sometimes he just give it to you a different way. Children of Israel sat there for 400 years and had to wait. God heard the prayer, though. So I don't want us to disguise tribulation. I don't want us to disguise heartache or struggle with God not listening. He listens. He hears. What we have to learn to do is interpret and understand what he's saying in the wait. I'm closing. Here's the first thing we got to do to know who you're on the right path. To know that you're in the right place with God. Number one, really simple, goes back to what I said earlier, communicate. Or what the Bible calls prayer. You have to take the time to stop what you're doing and talk to this man. Like truly talk. I'm not talking about going to church and I got baptized, so I got a relationship with God. Like truly pausing and say, what's up? How you doing? Let's have a conversation. See, we'll sit there and give God all these things that's going on in our life. Help my mama, help my daddy, help me, help me on my job. And we're just throwing up prayers, throwing them up. Prayer is a two-way conversation. Now, some of us ain't even praying. Go to slide five for me, Jeff. This is the confidence. Uh, this is the confidence that we have approaching God. I mean, I'm, conf I'm confident more in God than I am in Google or Amazon getting my order right. That if I ask him anything according to his what? Wait, now, wait. So what I want don't really matter? According to his will, he will hear us. So the first piece to this pie, this, this understanding is you have to pray. You have to communicate. If you getting up in the morning and you going along with your day without even pausing to talk to him, it's going to be a pretty challenging day because you didn't even get any direction. If you didn't pause somewhere in the middle of that cereal making or that washing the face or even in the drive to work for those that are driving to work still. You, <laughs> you got to talk to them. Turn off the radio. Turn off Sirius. Talk to them. Sports Animal can wait. 92.1. Uh, who plays in the morning? Is it uh, crazy? Uh, uh, smiling. He can wait. Turn off that radio and say, Lord, it's me and your time. I just want to talk to you. What's going on? A great relationship always starts with great communication. You want a bad relationship, stop communicating. So the first way to know if you're on the right path is communicate. Second Way to know whether or not you're actually doing what God asked you to do and you know what your purpose is in life is to listen or meditate. Uh, 
Prayer is the act of talking to God. Meditation is the act of listening to God. What if somebody walked up to you and just start talking at you and telling you a bunch of stuff? And girl, you wouldn't believe this happened. And then his mama said this. And then, oh, and let me tell you what happened at, at, at my job. And these people, boy, they drive me crazy. And they just talk, 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 talk. And then they said, all right, talk to you later and walked away. <laughs> How do you feel? Like, uh, did you, oh, did you want my opinion? Was I, I mean, I could be a good listener, but you're not just going to keep just da, 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 and walking away. That's not a relationship. The Bible speaks of us meditating. Go back one slide. I got ahead of myself. I think it's the, the, the scriptures that uh, speak to the meditation. Psalms 119, 15, 16. I will meditate or listen on your precepts and consider not my not my ways but your ways because then I delight in your decrees not not what I want to do and I will not neglect your word Psalm 77 and 12 I will consider all of the stuff that you're doing all of your works and then I'm going to meditate listen on all your mighty deeds Psalms 1914 we all know this one May, may what I say, the things that come out of my mouth, and the, the meditation, the listening, the focus of my heart, Lord, may it please you. Are we pleasing God? Are you pleasing God with what you say and how you act? And it's in this listening that's important. If you think about what Jesus gave the disciples when it was time to pray, it really makes sense to me. And I preached on this maybe a year ago about the Lord's prayer that he gave the disciples. It's a simple prayer. It's not a lot of words. It's not. Father in heaven, you're, you're amazing. Wonderful is your name. Let, let, your, let, my, let the things that I want come to, to, to me to know. Let... Your will that you created in me from day one, let it happen today. But I don't want to go through that, Lord. All things work together. All, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to. Oh, wait, wait my, you're not, not my purpose. So I got some purpose. I got some things I want to do in life. There's some things that I got to get done that I want to do. All things that are working are working for his purpose. And we won't stop enough to say, but, but what if I really want to, this was me, go work for Nike in Oregon when I graduate and be this top executive. And I mean, I really, I really wanted to do that. Or th this is me, just play two years of overseas ball. Like I can get married later and start a family later, but... I just want to play pro ball for two years in Mexico or Israel or somewhere. Or this is me. God, I, 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 like in my heart, I wanted to be on that Survivor show 20 years ago. Sent in my tape, told y'all this story, got a letter back saying, congratulations, you made it to the next round, drove to Dallas for an audition, got in front of all the executives, sold myself, I'm thinking, I'm going to be to get my 15 minutes of fame. I really wanted that. I was like, Lord, because if I can get in front of the television, I'm going to tell everybody that Jesus is the way. And I was going to be this for you. And God was like, what my purpose for you? What my plan? If I had taken the time to just pause and listen. What's that meme? Listen, Linda. Listen. Listen, Linda. Listen. If we would just take the time to listen to him. And here's what I'm, I'm challenging us to do. The Lord's Prayer is less than 30 seconds to a minute. You can add your own little stuff to it. But at the end of the day, he actually says, don't be like the hypocrites who do a lot of babbling when they pray. Don't, don't be like that. Your father already knows what you need. So when you pray, just meditate. You know what that actually means? What he's telling us to do, and you think about even Jesus, he would steal away and get away. He wasn't just talking to God 
the whole two, all night long while he was away, he was listening because he knew he had some stuff he needed to do. And he had to make sure he was listening to the instructions. That's so important. J Joshua, the very first battle in getting the promised land, he had to listen to God. He had to listen because God gave him specific instructions. Had he not listened, they don't win the first battle. He said, here's what you got to do, Joshua. I want you to march around one time for six days. Wait, wait, uh, hold, hold up. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I get this right. What you want me to He had to listen. And then on the seventh day, walk around seven times and then blow the trumpet at the end. Not at the beginning. Don't blow the trumpet on the third day. Don't blow the trumpet on. The... You don't get that level of detail if you're not listening. Here's what I need you to do. And the Lord will tell you exactly what he needs you to do at your job or with your family or who you should call, who you should forgive. But if you're not listening, you're going to miss it. So key number one is you, you got to at least start the conversation and start talking to them more often. If me and my wife don't talk. We won't know what's going on and we'll miss one another. And Oh, I thought you was go going near after. You got to talk. And then the second thing is you got to listen. Listen actively. Here's the third thing that you got to do that's important in the scripture. Uh. And I'm going to get to it here. It's wait. I'm trying to find the scripture that goes with this. Wait. You got to wait. The path to our purpose is in the waiting. The path to our purpose is in the waiting. I wrote this down because this was significant to me. We often like to get answers or solve problems immediately. Our society has evolved to an instant, get what you want, anything you want, overnight. Amazon has made billions off of our immediate wants and needs of order by three and get it by six tomorrow. 18 month, no interest offers, pay over 18 months, you can get it right now today. You can walk out with it right now and just pay over 18 months. We start doing the math and I hear, if I take, uh, it'll be about 150 a month over, and I get that bonus, then I could probably pay that off. And see. We've turned God into Amazon. And we start putting stuff in the cart. And God, here's what I want. I want it right now. And you got all this stuff in the cart and God is like, delete. Delete. Who, who told you delete? I didn't delete. And we'll go back and say, who took that out of my cart? Who, who took that out of my cart? And God is saying, just wait. Quit being impatient. Wait. I got something for you, but this is painful. I, I don't want to deal with this. Wait, I'm, I'm teaching you something. The illustration I give, and I, I give a lot of illustrations because this is just how my brain works. But I think about kids in the back of a car. We've all either been that kid or had kids. And they're sitting in the back of the car. They don't know directions. They don't know streets. They don't know much of anything. They might know a sign here or there. But they sit in the back of that car and they trust their parents to get them where they need to go. They may ask the questions, are we there yet? Are, 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 where are we going? How much longer? <laughs> if he ain't talking to you, he's talking to me. And we'll say, God, are we there yet? How much longer? God, are we there yet? How much longer? And God's driving. Wait, just be patient. And just like those kids who may be a little angst, antsy, angsty and impatient and unsure if we're going to get to Disney on time or get to grandma's on time. Even with all that angst, they trust their mom and their dad is going to keep them safe. God is telling somebody right now this morning that the road you're on right now may not feel good. 
may not understand it. You don't know when. How much longer are we going to be in this season? And he's saying, you know what? Do you trust me? Do, just, just, medit- just wait and trust me. But I don't, I, don't, I don't know about all this. If she keeps on, Lord, <laughs> wait. Because what I'm building in you is faith and hope and love and courage and justice and restraint. I'm building in you assertiveness and caring and commitment, compassion, confidence. What I'm building in you is diligence and excellence and flexibility and forgiveness, friendliness, generosity, integrity, joyfulness, kindness, loyalty, self-discipline. That's what God is doing. The Eve story or the Eve Chronicle repeats itself every day. You know what Eve's true issue was? And we like, we like to say, oh, it was the forbidden fruit. Or it was, you know, Satan deceived her. All those things are true. But when I read the story, and the more I think through the story of Eve and Adam, it wasn't just Adam, Eve's fault. We like to place the, the blame on Eve, but Adam went along with it. It wasn't so much the forbiddenness of it, or did God really tell you to do that? He had given them everything they would ever need. Gold, uranium, berries, fruits, you name it. They had it all. Think of every resource in this world today. They had it in the garden. They didn't have to go out and look for it. It was in the garden. And there was one tree that was new. I ain't never had that one. That's new. In us today is still this desire of, I ain't seen them J's before, them new pair. I ain't got that colorway right there. That, that, now that purse, I got a lot of them, but I don't have that purse. That's new. That house, <laughs> that house, beautiful home God give me, but oh my gosh, did you see that house we just went through, Parade of Homes? That's a new house. My car, it, it drive good. Boy, that that new S series is the same temptation, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh of wanting something new will get you in trouble because God is telling you to wait. Just wait. So here's what I'm getting ready to do. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. I had a couple of more scriptures, but I'm I'm gonna stop there. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray for us that we understand truly. And Jeff, we don't even need any music today because we're going to go through an exercise that um, we're going to apply today's message to to, to our lives. I'm going to pray over us. And then we're going to meditate for five minutes. That's it. There's power in the pause. And here's my prayer today. I truly believe the presence of the Lord is with us. He's in us. And as we're praying, I want you to ask God, Lord, what's my purpose? Where am I supposed to be a year from now, five years from now? Lord, where do you see me 10 years from now? 10 years from now, I'll be 55. Am I in line? with where you want me to go. I want you to ask God, Lord, is it anybody that I'm holding a grudge against that I need to forgive? Because again, some things can only come if you pause and listen and not be quick to get up and go after you pray. Ask God, what, is there anything that I need to start doing that you told me to do? Is there anything that I need to stop doing that you need me to do? And it's going to be quiet in here. It's going to be awkwardly quiet. But I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to start speaking to some hearts. Maybe he's already started speaking in this sermon. And in that quiet meditation time, that's going to be the start of what you're going to be doing all week long. Maybe some of you are already meditating and listening and trusting and waiting God. But this hour that we put aside for God, 
That's what we're going to use it for. That's why we come, right? That's why we come to get better. That's what the whole purpose. Come to church is to learn and get better. So that's what we're going to do today. So bow your eyes. Uh, I mean, clo- close your eyes. Bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much today for your mercy and your grace, for your word, for your compassion. We thank you for uh, just speaking to us and caring enough about us to create us and then living out the purpose you designed. I pray for everybody in here today and those that are listening and watching who just wants to know when, God, how, what's next, how much longer. Lord, I pray that you would show us that you would give us the patience to stick and stand and understand your ways. For those that don't pray enough, God, I pray that you would give them a desire to talk to you more. For those that don't listen, I pray, God, that you would teach us, show us how to just stop and listen. And for those that are in a hurry to get an answer and time is running out, only got six months before, teach us to wait. And right now, Lord, as we go into this next portion of this prayer, Lord, I I ask that you would show us, show us your way, show us the purpose of it all. You do stuff on purpose for our purpose. And I pray right now, as we go into a silent period, show us, Lord, what we should do, what we should should say. Quiet our minds. Halt the busyness of our thoughts. As we meditate on your throne, meditate on Jesus sitting next to you on the throne. Meditate on your scripture, your words that you've said to us. Speak now, Lord.
If you're still listening to God, I don't want to interrupt that. I truly do believe that the Lord He listens. He knows our heart's desire, but at the same time, I believe He gives us that that window, that door to hear from Him. So make this a part of your your normal daily chore. Budget in 10, 15 minutes into your day. He's worked it. Whatever you're feeling right now, we, we achieve that in three and a half, maybe four minutes of meditation. Imagine just getting in front of God for about 15, 30 minutes and just listening. What Joe does he say? Don't talk. Just listen. Don't say nothing. Because even in a little bit of time I did this, and even as I was preparing my sermon over the week, I could hear God telling me, you need to forgive this person, you let that go. But God, just listen. It ain't worth it. I hear God saying, you, you probably should do, do what I asked you to do. Here's the outcome if you do it. I'll speak to you. Me and my wife often, this has become one of the foundations of her and I's conversations a lot and it helps us balance and make decisions and really get starting to guide who we are in our 23 years of, of marriage. Anything that's important to you, you're going to make a priority. And anything that's a priority to you, it's important to you. My wife is truly important to me. I'm going to make her a priority. Like if she's really that important, I'm going to make her a priority. And if I'm important to her, she's going to make me a priority. There's a lot of people tell you that God is important to them. And they do a bunch of stuff that don't show how important he is. And God is telling us today, make me a priority. Make me a priority. I'm important to you. Make me, a, make me a priority. Five minutes. Start with five minutes this week. Five minutes a morning or at night. Just quiet. And then just wait. Amen. I don't know about y'all. That was good for me. I've been that's been ministering to me for about a week now, and uh, to be able to share it with you is a blessing. I pray that it, it blessed your hearts. Go back and watch it again online. It's on our Facebook page. And then I'm going to put snippets of the sermon on uh, Instagram later today and uh, Snapchat. And what is the other one I said I was on? Uh, to TikTok. Yeah, thank you. I'm on the TikTok. I am on the TikTok. I'm going to put snippets of the sermon on TikTok. Share it. Share Jesus. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share it. All right. Howard, I turn it over to you or Belinda. You got something to say for us, and then we'll close out. How's everybody doing? Um, first, I wanted to say on behalf of uh, Pastor Ron, Lady Tammy, and um, our hospitality team, I want to welcome all our visitors. So I know there's plenty of other places that you could have worshipped today, so we thank you for spending time with us. And if you are visiting for the first time in front of your seat, it should be a, a card, a communication card, if you could turn that into the orphan basket. And if you don't see one, just raise your hand and we'll get you one. But also, I wanted to announce our Soul Church Christmas party. I'm so excited that we get to have our party again this year. If you've come in the past and you know that it's fun, it's competitive, it's gifts, it's food, and <laughs> we have a great time. So just wanted to let everybody know that on De December 12th, we'll be having our Soul Christmas party. Um, invite people out there will be a gift card for the person who has the most visitors we also are going to be doing three drawings for visitors so all visitors would go in for a drawing and we will be giving out gift cards for christmas for that as well um there will be a gift exchange game that we normally do so if you'd like to participate in the game then bring a wrapped unmarked gift valued at twenty dollars 
um, and also see me after church to sign up for food to bring. I think that's everything. So December 12th, Christmas party, visitors um, in the offer basket, the card. Okay. Uh, I will acknowledge uh, all of our visitors. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is my friend Brent and his wife Dee and their lovely daughter. We grew up together, and so I'm glad he was able to come out uh, and visit us today. And I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Quite, quite a bit of a drive, but I'm glad you made it uh, all this way. Uh, any other comments or anything else before we close today? Any announcements? Uh, keep Ron and Tammy in your prayers. We appreciate uh, what they're doing for us here. If nothing else, we're always in here at Soul Church. What our, 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 we go out on this. Just remember that God's love is good to the soul. To the soul. All right, God bless you. God keep you. Give somebody a hug and a handshake.